Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your holy name. All right. I'm using a microphone because I think last time when I did a video out here, I couldn't hear myself. So I don't want the message to be lost on any reason because whatever God leads me to do it is all to give him the glory and I would hate to miss a point just because of some technical error so I hope this helps um remove me Abba Godfather Jehovah my Lord and add all of you Psalm 115 verse 1 not unto me but be unto you be all the glory thank you Jesus for your blood I plead the blood your blood over this word and Holy Ghost use me Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, um, I did a message this morning, and I wasn't comfortable with it because I felt like um, I'm literally sitting. So I hope you're sitting as well. It's hot out here, but it's manageable. I can always manage for the Lord. Okay, hold on a second. I'm sorry. I should have gotten this together before I sat down. Okay, whew. did I move this? Oh, okay. I wasn't, I didn't feel comfortable with the message I left this morning because I felt like I didn't glorify God enough. I was excited. That should have been a moment just between me and God. I was so happy um, in his presence, but I didn't utilize, I don't think that time effectively enough to really talk about him. And this, is the purpose of me doing this now <laughs> okay Whew. I'm not moving no more it is what it is I don't want a distraction look like that little table who cares I'm the one distracted please remove distraction in the name of Jesus amen um a lot of people are looking for love and they want to know what it is and the true meaning of love is the epitome of God what he's done for us and how he shows us he cares for us is an example of love and out of the many ways that God shows us that he loves us both through the way that he shines his light in our face during the most um, part of the day where you least expect to receive a blessing from God sometimes God will have somebody just turn around and, and give you a good word make you feel better and, and out of a day of disaster, that is the one thing that can make you think, wow, God shows up. It's just the little things, not just the big things we should be grateful for. But out of all the endless ways that God shows us that he loves us. Because that's in perspective of the person and how grateful and how humble they are. In other words, a person wouldn't feel so grateful or maybe not be as grateful for just pulling off a can of corn off the shelf in a grocery store but someone who's gone through being in a driving cart that can't just move their body around like you know they may be used to or never had that freedom in their body to be able to do that will look at pulling a can of corn off the shelf as a huge blessing as opposed to somebody that just takes it for granted so that's all I'm saying is a lot of times we miss just how beautiful God shows us that he's with us um, and forget the small things but one major ultimate way that God revealed to us that he loves us is through sending his only begotten son into the world to die for us Jesus Yeshua of Nazareth Christ Jesus the Lamb of God is pure and when he came to the earth he came here pure without any sin and to know that he came here pure but his sole purpose was to free us from the curse that was separating us from our Heavenly Father the creator of heaven and earth and also to give us a way of seeing how to go through things that we go through daily by how he did it 
as not a, just an example, but by his word shows us how to do these things, as well as the free gift of eternal life. He came here, went on a mission. He came here on a mission. He didn't come here for comfort. He didn't come here to sit on a throne in earth because he already has his throne. He sits on the right side of Heavenly Father in heaven. But he came here to literally experience pain, suffering, detriment of living comfort. I mean, the Bible says that he didn't even have a place to lay his head. I anticipate that he wasn't always comfortable. In fact, he preached about a day time and at night the Bible said he would go and retreat into the mountains. But I don't see any cake and ice cream and 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 tables and chairs ready for you to be comfortable in the mountains. In particularly in those days, he didn't come here for luxury. He didn't even come here in a luxurious way. He came here and was born in a, in a barn where the animals were kept and he was laid to rest as a baby in a manger. A manger is where you put slop and food for animals to eat out of. So he was eating where animals, he was laying down where animals laid in, put their mouth to eat their food. Okay? Humble. And... The curse that he took off of us came all the way from Adam and Eve, from the times of where the first humans lived and dwelt in the earth. They fell into a trap that the enemy, no surprise, fell into a trap that the enemy, see the enemy is set up to try to entrap us. And they took an easy way out of what they thought was an easy way out. Really what they were doing is taking a loophole trying to take a loophole in God's word and it didn't work out for them and it cost all of their offspring to be cursed because we were introduced to sin being introduced to sin means that we were no longer able to be in front of the pureness of God nothing sinful can be in his presence and um there was sacrifice of many animals for the pure blood God God gave us grace to sacrifice animals back in those days to put us in right alignment to let our sins be on there it had to it was dealing with blood but God in his infinite wisdom never he didn't want us to be separated from him anymore he wanted it to be a one deal one time deal <coughs> so he sent his only begotten son who is still a part of him he's still a part of him Jesus is God in the flesh and when he sent his only begotten son down here when he died on the cross that was the ultimate sacrifice we no longer needed animals it fell on sanctified holy blood where the curse could no longer stay there death could not stay and rest on God because God is infinite God is sovereign God is over death he created it so he took our curse upon him the lashes on his back being brutally brutally beaten brutally brutally tortured all night long the Bible says he was slain that means that he no longer had the form of a man they beat him down to the point where he no longer looked recognizable as a man that's what slain means I won't be on long I think this is telling me that my device is getting hot he allowed himself to go through a detriment a, a disgusting horrible death because that's what we deserve and even though we suffer here in the earth there is nothing that can stop us from eternal life because Jesus the Son of God took what we deserve on his back and when he rose from the dead on the third day he came out with victory and as the free gift that we talked about is us receiving that free victory from eternal damnation now to live in earth and to live to your full purpose is to go his way into things. Go his way into things. Asking him. He's a living spirit. His spirit is dwelling among us. The Holy Ghost is here. But there will be the time in the last day of the earth where he's coming back in those clouds. And he's coming back to pick up the ones who have been waiting for him. The ones that know he exists. To get to know him now is to ask him to reveal himself to you now if you don't know him. Also the Bible is very vital because his words are alive and living prophetic at very prophetic 
at the least it will talk to you the bible talks to you because god is in his word his word is in god and so we thank you jesus for what you've done because what he's done is he's cleared the path for us to talk to god and ask him for help and when you ask god for help you be ready to receive it if you need strength and faith and and wisdom knowledge of what it is i'm even saying he would give all those things to you no man taught me these things no book it was the word of god which is the book the holy spirit teaching me every single day me spending time with the lord in his presence and him leading me into truth and full wisdom i am not self-taught and self-made the holy spirit is literally he talks with me and he teaches me things and then i come and i teach them to whoever is willing to receive i don't make up these words i don't come up with something for popularity i could care less i walked away from facebook years ago and i meant it when i told the last serious relationship that i was in in 2019 i said that's it i'm not going back to facebook even though i was trying to still help in my way behind the scene i did let it go and i had made up in my mind i would never return and i meant it like i remember saying that i'm never going back to facebook and the Lord led me back to it. And he led me back to it to do his work. So that's why I took that message down from this morning. Because it was more about, I think, me than it was about Jesus. And I'm not here to waste my time. I'm here to talk about the love of God. Repentance is quite important. To be able to go into a life of light. You got to be able to shed off the old stuff. And the old stuff is left in unrepentance. You need help for that. You need help for God to lead you in his wisdom be willing to pick up the book the bible and read and then be willing to meditate on the word and see how it applies to you fear is not of god we must release it now in the name of jesus help us to release fear and those that are just waking up out of their sleep god please give them wisdom to walk in your light to know where to find this knowledge that you give i know it comes from you i know you use vessels lord help your children to wake up in the peace of your light it is in the name of jesus we pray amen that's pure love is to give your only begotten son to take the place of your children so they can be with you that's what god did he want us with him because there's no way we could have went to heaven with a curse on us nothing cursed can go into heaven jesus took the curse on him and he went to hell with it for three days and buried it there it's been done and he don't have to do it again he don't have to die again that's it death couldn't even hold him down for those three days he allowed it to hold him Okay, Jesus didn't come here to get killed. He came here to give his life. They thought they killed Jesus. Jesus freely gave his life for me and you. He had us in mind. So when they beat him and they asked him to to justify himself, he didn't say a mumbling word because he knew what he was doing for me and you. Him mumbling a word had nothing to do with what he was doing for me and you. He had us in mind before we were even born. That's true love. And then when he teaches you just how much he loves you, you eventually start to love yourself and then when you start loving yourself that's when you're able to learn others including your enemies that's when you really know how to love the people who may not understand you right now that's how you truly learn to love those who don't love you back and that's only from heaven you can only learn it from god jesus is the pathway to true love he is pure love i hope this has helped you as it has given me warm feelings in my heart but it's not about to make you feel good. This is just full truth that I'm saying. So if you don't believe what I'm saying, ask the Lord to reveal his son to you. I don't have to do that. And he'll do it for you. That's my prayer. And in closing, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee and make his face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. Yes, Lord. May he lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for sitting with me for a short time. I pray that this wasn't in vain. I pray that it has helped somebody. That's my prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.